I have to show you this. Could God have given signs in real time, in front of the world, showing his hand and his will and his judgment? I'm gonna show you two of these things that happened since the last prophetic message was posted. You're gonna see them for yourself. The first is a video of what happened. The second is an image or more than one image, which actually follows up what I shared last time. You'll see it with your own eyes. You'll see the blessing and the curse, the curse and the blessing. This is Jonathan Kahn. And what I'm gonna show you is first for you who know God, but it's also for you who don't. And if you're a subscriber who has any doubt about the reality of God or his hand in current events, it's for you. And if you know anybody who has any doubt, send this to them. Now, before we go full blast, they're popping up like mushrooms, all sorts of fake Jonathan Kahn channels. It's a good sign. God is using the channel, but they're all fake. Only this one is real. So if you're not getting it or not to miss any prophetic message, hit subscribe. All right, the first of the two. And for this, you'll see a video. It just happened recently, but it goes back almost 4,000 years. God told Abraham in Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you, I will curse. This has been called the Abrahamic covenant. It's real simple. If you bless Abraham, as in his children, if you bless the Jewish people, you'll be blessed. If you curse them, you'll be cursed. Now it can be taken in a larger sense. Whatever you do to the Jewish people or to Israel, it's gonna be done to you. Now this biblical law has held true from the days of the pharaohs of Egypt to the days of the Assyrian Empire, to Babylon, to Persia, to Greece, to Rome, to the kingdoms of Europe, the Spanish Empire, the British Empire, the Nazis, the Soviet Union, and America. Quick check, first question, which nation has been the greatest ally of Israel in the modern world? America. Second question, which nation has been the most blessed nation in the modern world? America. It's not a coincidence. It's the Abrahamic covenant. That's the law. It's held true from ancient times to this very moment. Now, before we go further, for your own sake, this law doesn't just apply to nations. It applies to people. I've met anti-Semitic people in my life, people who hate the Jewish people, who hate Israel, and I've never met any of them who was blessed and who wasn't cursed. Never. Whether they were well off in the world or not, they were cursed. There was a darkness over their life, over their heart, over everything. On the other hand, I've never met a person, particularly a believer, who loved the Jewish people, who loved Israel, and wasn't blessed. Regardless of circumstances, it didn't matter. There was a blessing on their life, on their heart, on their spirit, on everything. So for your own sake, for the sake of your life and blessing, do not curse the Jewish people or Israel. Bless them. How? Pray for them. Get the gospel to them. Support ministries that are doing that. Stand with them. As Ruth was to Naomi, you be the Ruth to the Naomi of Israel. Now you're about to see the Abrahamic covenant activate in real time. For that, we have to go to Turkey. Interesting. Turkey is prominently mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39 among the peoples or nations that are going to come against Israel in the end times. That's another message, but take note. You may have caught a glimpse of this on the internet, but we're gonna open it wide open. This was filmed in the Turkish parliament. Turkey is for all intents and purposes a Muslim nation. And it tends to be very negative against Israel. A member of the Turkish parliament gets up to give a speech. The speech condemns Israel, of course, and for Israel's actions in defending itself against the terror of Hamas. He goes on and on and on condemning Israel. But at the end of his speech, he does something not usually seen in a speech in a parliament. He calls down a curse upon Israel from heaven. He actually calls down a curse. Now watch, I want you to see it for yourself. The translation is going to be at the bottom. Halbuki bizden kurtulsanız, vicdan azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Vicdan azabından kurtulsanız, tarihin azabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Tarihin azabından kurtulsanız Allah'ın gazabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum. Okay, he just cursed Israel. And not only cursed Israel, but actually called down a curse from heaven upon Israel. Now Genesis 12 warns, don't do that. Because if you do that, what you call down on Israel or the Jewish people, it's going to come back down on you. Now watch what happens. <laughs> Allah'ın gazabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum.
The man was struck down dead. He called down a curse from heaven on Israel and he was struck dead. The Abrahamic covenant before your eyes in real time. Is God real or what? Genesis 12 recorded on videotape at the Turkish parliament. Do you think the Turkish government might have second thoughts about cursing Israel in the future? Well, they're going to be part of Ezekiel 38 and 39, but maybe some will take note. But here's the thing. America has been Israel's strongest ally in the modern world and the most blessed nation. But there's a very present danger. The polls are showing that the younger generation of Americans is not only the generation that's least connected to God and biblical values, but it's the least pro-Israel generation in American history, the most anti-Israel generation, heavily influenced by TikTok, and the most pro-Hamas. And stunningly, one poll showed that virtually the majority of young Americans were pro-Hamas. They believe that what Hamas did on October 7th, the murders, the tortures, the rapes, the mutilations of Israeli civilians was justified. This is the future of America. If America turns away from Israel, guess what will happen? God's blessings will turn away from America. That includes the blessings of prosperity, power, safety, protection. Pray for America and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They will prosper as it is written, who love thee. Now, if you have anybody in your life who's anti-Semitic, get this to them for their own sake. And if you are in any association or denomination or church or group that's anti-Israel or anti-Jewish, either get them to get out of it or get yourself out of it. It's cursed. You don't need a curse on your life. Now we move to the next sign. The last special message I did was called the Pope Francis apostasy. I spoke of what the Pope just did, which was monumental and ominous and full of ramifications that are going to be seen in the days and years ahead. Now, if you're Catholic, again, this is not about denominations. That won't matter in heaven. It's about truth because truth has to be first. The Lord has to be first. What the Pope just did, he issued a decree saying that Catholic priests, the Catholic Church may now bless homosexual couples, lesbian couples. This is unprecedented in the history of the Catholic Church and of Western Christendom. And though they tried to rationalize it by saying, well, it's not necessarily blessing the union. No, it says specifically couples. This is monumental. And we have not even yet begun to see the repercussions that are coming down the road, not only for the culture, but for end time prophecy and the apostasy and the church. Now I'm going to show you a sign, but this just happened since I posted that message. The man who officially issued that decree from the Pope, whom the Pope put in charge of the office of doctrine to replace the other man who said God cannot bless sin. It just came out that that guy, this guy had written a book where he speaks of orgasms and women's private parts, but includes a vision of having sex with Jesus. This is the one who's now in charge of Catholic doctrine. Now there was a great backlash to what the Pope did. He's opening the door to the blessing of homosexual unions. The Pope responded saying that the opposition was just, quote, from small ideological groups. In other words, he's doubling down on this. But then there was a case, the small case of Africa. The African bishops and priests said, no way are we going along with this sin. The Pope responded, listen, that Africa was a, quote, special case. To agree with the Bible is now apparently a special case. You're part of a small ideological group or you're from Africa. The Pope continued saying, quote, for them, meaning the Africans, homosexuality is something bad from a cultural point of view. Now, let me say that again. He said, for them, the Africans, homosexuality is something bad for them from a cultural point of view. I thought the Bible said that homosexuality is a sin, but now I've learned it's not at all. It's just because that in Africa, they see it as bad, but not apparently the rest of us. We don't, apparently what the Pope is saying is we don't. It's only getting worse. And I told you what it was. It's very simple. It's called apostasy. Now, is it possible that God has actually weighed in on this? Can God give a sign by using a statue, an image of stone or a, or a sign concerning judgment? using that. Now make note, it's not about God condoning an image of stone or a statue, but can he make his will known by using such objects? Well, he already did. 
The Bible records that the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant into their temple of Dagon. They put it near the idol, the statue of Dagon. In the morning, they found the statue of Dagon bowed down on its face before the ark. They set it back. Next morning, they find it again bowed down before the ark, but now with its hands and its head cut off. It was a sign of the reality of God and the falsehood of Dagon and God's judgment on false gods. But yes, the answer is yes, God can and has used statues or idols to manifest signs or messages. And you're going to see that right now. Even if you caught a glimpse of this before, we're going to open up the significance. What it actually means. Catholic doctrine states, and Catholic belief has been, that the Pope sits in the chair or the office of Peter. That's a whole other issue. But that is the Catholic belief and claim. According to that belief, Pope Francis sits in the succession and office and authority of the Apostle Peter. There is a statue of Peter, the office of which... Francis claims. It stands in South America, the land from which Francis comes. Further, the statue of Peter stands in Argentina. Argentina is the homeland of the Pope. Further, the statue is located in the province of Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is where the Pope comes from. He was over it before he became Pope. So the statue is of the office that the Pope claims in the land that the Pope is from in the nation that the, is the Pope's nation, in the province of the city in which the Pope was presiding over. So what happened? It didn't happen long ago. What happened was a bolt of lightning came down and struck the statue. Does every lightning strike mean judgment? No, but this one is too much. It strikes the sign of the office in the land, in the nation, in the province of the Pope. And it turns out There are major lightning rods around this statue to prevent this, so this shouldn't have happened, but it happened anyway. But it's not only where the statue was and where the bolt of lightning came, it was when it all came, when the lightning struck the statue. It was on December 17th, 2023. Anything significant about that date? Well, yeah, December 17th happens to be the birthday of the Pope. So you have the office, the land, the nation, the province, the time, the birthday, all pointing to the present Pope. But something else. It struck the statue on December 17th. On December 17th, Pope Francis was preparing to do something, to issue that decree that would open the door to homosexuality in Catholic doctrine and practice and life. So the lightning bolt struck the statue of Peter, not only on the Pope's birthday, December 17th, but the very day the Vatican was planning to release that colossal decree that would change everything the very next day. And I want you to see what happened. It wasn't just that the lightning bolt struck the statue. It's what it did. I want you to see the statue, the head of the statue before the lightning. Now that's a halo around the head. What does a halo symbolize? It symbolizes holiness, the holiness of the person around whom is the halo. Now this is what the lightning did. Look at the image. The lightning bolt removed the halo from the statue. It removed the sign of holiness on the statue that points to Pope Francis. The sign would say, there is no holiness. The act of blessing homosexual couples was an unholy act. And that wasn't all. I want you to look at the hand of the statue before the striking of the lightning bolt. The hand is holding the keys as in the keys of Peter. From the scripture, when the Lord says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Saying that, Peter and the authority of the church, believers, are given authority, access, power, and a connection to heaven and the will of God. What did the lightning bolt do? I want you to see this now. The lightning bolt removed the keys. It melted them away, removed them. And what is that a sign of? The keys are a sign of authority, saying authority is gone. 
no spiritual authority. The authority of God only comes inside the will of God. If you go outside the will of God, you can't wield the authority of God. If you disobey the ways of God, you have no authority. And if any man goes against the will of God and instructs others to do the same, they have no authority at all. But a key is also about access, a link to heaven and a link to the things of God. The key is removed. There is no more access or there is no access at all. It's a closed and locked door. In the Bible, the right hand is a symbol of strength and power. Now look at the statue, the hand of the statue before the lightning bolt. Now look at what happened to that hand after the strike of the lightning bolt. No power, no strength. In the Psalms it's written, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. In other words, if I forget the purposes of God, well, the Pope forgot the purposes of God. The right hand was destroyed. In the book of Kings, there's a king named Jeroboam, an evil king. He builds a pagan shrine and an altar. He's about to sacrifice on it when a prophet of God comes and rebukes him. Jeroboam orders his men to seize the prophet. He lifts up his hand as, he's, as he orders the prophet's arrest. It goes against the will of God. Immediately, God strikes his hand. So this hand withers up. So here is the hand of the statue here all pointing to the Pope. It was struck and destroyed. The Pope had instructed this decree against the will of God. And so this is not a sign of good. It's a sign of evil. The Pope ordered the Catholic Church may now bless homosexual unions. According to Catholic practice, blessings are given through the right hand. The officiant is to extend his right hand and bless. So what happened? The very day before that decree to issue the, the go-ahead on the Catholic Church and priest blessing with their right hand, homosexual unions, the lightning struck the right hand, the hand of blessing. It eviscerated it. Look at it. Meaning there is no blessing there can be no blessing. All blessings are nullified. You know, the previous head of the doctrine office said, God cannot bless sin. The Pope said, in effect, God can bless sin. The Catholic Church can bless sin. And so the hand that blesses was struck down, in effect, destroyed. In other words, God cannot bless sin. There is no blessing, only a curse, and a curse on those who would bless what God has declared to be sin. Those of you in any church or ministry that blesses this, that which God clearly calls sin, do not in any way raise your hand to bless such things. The hand that is raised to bless that which God calls sins is the hand that is raised against God. It will be cut off. If you are in any church that blesses such things, talk to them that they might change. Pray for them. Show them the, this video. Give them the link. If they don't, then leave because a curse rests upon that place. We began with a curse and we end with a blessing. But God turned the curse that was spoken at the beginning of this message in the parliament of Turkey in on itself. And now God nullifies the blessing of sin and it becomes a curse. Whether you're Catholic, Protestant, or anything else, you cannot entrust your salvation to any man, any organization, anything except God. Man can go off, as you can see, but God and his word will never go off. The Bible says, let all men be liars, let God be true. God alone is our source. God alone is our shepherd. Follow him, regardless. There will be no religious seats or sections in heaven. Only are you saved or not. Did you for real receive Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah into your life and turn from sin and follow him with all your heart? Were you born again, a true child of God? Did you live your life truly for him and with him and in him and by him? And if you haven't, you need to do that. You need to get right with God. The most important thing you can do. If you have Catholic friends or anyone who needs to see this, get this video, get this link to them.
So we have seen two acts, each one representing a hand lifted up against the will and word and ways of God. One, a curse against God's blessing. Another, a blessing against that which God has cursed. One, against God's covenant to Israel. The other, against God's covenant of creation and nature. And we've seen two signs of judgment. For the Bible says, God will not be mocked. The ways of sin lead to death, but the ways of God and repentance lead to life. Last thing, the statue of Peter in the province of Buenos Aires was one of two statues. The other statue was of Paul, the apostle Paul. Now in that statue, Paul is holding up a sword of iron. It was untouched. Nobody claims to hold the office of Paul or his keys, but Paul said, lift up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's the final word. In days of evil, in days of apostasy, it is not less important, but more important that you as a child of God hold up the word of God without bending, without compromise, without fear. The more the world falls away, the more you stand strong. And now I leave you with this word from the book of Ephesians from the Apostle Paul. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Because our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but against rulers, powers, world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist on the evil day. And having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having strapped on your feet the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith by which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right. If you haven't already, make sure you don't miss getting these messages when they come out. Remember, hit subscribe. This is Jonathan Kahn. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Shalom. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere, Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.